What I've learned over the last 12 months, if you want the body, you want to drop the body fat, you want to crush it in the gym, you want a high functioning brain, you want to have longevity, you want all of that, you want energy, then it's gut health. What I'm going to share with you today is one simple solution with one extra step. And this comes from a meta-analysis of 22 clinical trials, placebo control with 1,891 people. If we get our gut health back, guess what happens? Right here, if you've got gut dysbiosis, which simply means a leaky gut, then you've got testicular or testicular function, fertility and testosterone. What we need to do, legends, is get gut symbiosis back, and then we can start revving up the V8 engine. And this, this one also correlates to another video that I put out recently. Recently, it's linked below. It's about the V8 diagnostics, so you can check that one out too. And look at what the gut also impacts. It's not just the testes, the gut testy access. It's also the gut skin access. We're talking about cirrhosis, acne, skin cancer. And then over here, metabolism, obesity, type 2 diabetes, or undiagnosed insulin resistance, mitochondrial dysfunction, so your energy starts to come down. And then, of course, cancer. Then the gut lung access, so you've got asthma and allergies, pulmonary disease, and of course, lung cancer. And then your money maker, like your earning potential comes down because you've got psychiatric disorders, you've got ADHD, ADDD, and you've also got anxiety and depression and panic attacks, autism and neurological disorders as well. So you can appreciate now how the gut is absolutely huge. So the, the one solution that I'll give you, again, it was done meta-analysis of 22 clinical trials recently this year 1891 people and it's really simple to do so what is the problem with the gut well it becomes leaky so what we need to achieve is this healthy tight junction here and a good microbiome so when you've got these these tight junctions there it's like tight and nothing can get through but when the gut becomes leaky pathogens food particles bacteria translocate directly into the bloodstream and that causes an exaggerated IgG immune response, an IgA reaction, B and T cells are released and you feel like shit and that can trigger the breach of the gut, brain, lungs, testes and skin access and then that'll eventually develop food intolerances like if the foods that you used to eat when you were a lot younger, maybe now at 30, 40, 50, you just can't eat them, they bloat you. They make you fatigued and tired, and that'll eventually cause autoimmune diseases like lupus, and you've also got Hashimoto's and thyroid issues and testicle issues as well. And it drives, of course, low or acute inflammation. So what really starts to happen is that these tight junctions, they open up and undigested food comes in and bacteria, then these food ingredients and undigested food and bacteria translocate into the blood, to the organs, trigger inflammation and cause food allergies to your favorite foods. And guess what else it screws up? Your sleep. So these food intolerances, because you've got a leaky gut, negatively influence patterns on sleep. Now, it takes two to six months to get a healthy gut back, and then you can probably start to reintroduce the foods you're sensitive to. And I'll show you all of these food sensitivities here today. But sleep, legends, is absolutely key if you want to drop the body fat and pack on the muscle and wake up in the morning and attack the day like a beast. Listen to this. This is Dr. Matthew Walker, neuroscientist. He just, he, all he researches is sleep. You're not getting sufficient sleep. 70% of all the weight that you lose will come from lean muscle mass, sorry, and not fat. Right. The body, when it's fatigued in that way, wants to hold on to those fats. Exactly. Right? Your body becomes stingy in giving up its fat. Mm -hmm. So in other words, when you are underslept, but you're trying to watch your diet, watch what you eat, you will lose what you wanted to keep, which is muscle, and you will gain what you wanted to lose, which is fat. So you gain, you gain fat. And you're losing muscle like 70 percent. so you still lose weight but you're losing bad weight you're losing your muscle mass then you can't eat many carbohydrates why because your muscles are the biggest users of glucose so it just becomes a you know a really bad situation for a lot of people and of course it drives this inflammation here and if you recall the previous video i did on the v8 diagnostic blood labs this is the problem with the current system they'll say that if your c-reactive protein a marker of inflammation on the blood lab is three and below you're good out the door you go you're fine 
Well, according to Chris Masterjohn, PhD nutrition scientist, if between one and three, you've got chronic low-grade inflammation, this is what shows up in life, you know, 40, 50, 60, cardiovascular disease, neurological disease, autoimmune, arthritis, cancer, lupus, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue. He's just tired all the time. So the gut is absolutely huge. And I'm going to give you something else that I've learned along the journey, my journey too. You've got a microbiome in your mouth and it's really important for nitric oxide production. Now you need nitric oxide production to make testosterone right there and to also have great blood pressure because it vasodilates your arteries. So you've got great blood flow. And you need great blood flow, flow to your brain so your money is switched on and you can think. You've got great memory recall, working memory. And if you want to have a lot of energy, you need great blood flow. So I'm going to give you the solution to that too. And the amazing thing about the oral microbiome, it can recover in about four days. And there's two big things that take it out. And I'll share that with you. Right here, the leaky gut affects the testes. So basically, you can see how the gut here it's all interconnected to the testes and the meat as well, you know, the meat. And if you've got gut dysbiosis, and we'll show you how to solve that problem here today, then you'll have low sperm count and testosterone. But if you've got gut symbiosis, which is what we want, then you've got great fertility and great testosterone production. But this search paper went a little bit deeper about nutrient status. And they were talking about retinol, vitamin D, and poor vitamin and mineral status. And if you want to know more information about that, drop a comment below. Happy to do another video on that. So there's more complications with the testicular function when you've got gut dysbiosis. And one of the mechanisms of action is that sometimes these gut microbes, right, the bad stuff, and we will solve that problem today, they reduce serum and brain testosterone levels by degradating testosterone. So you're making your testosterone and it flows into the gut to digest your food. And these little bad gut bugs, they chew it up. They're just crushing your testosterone. Now let's just talk about what we need to take off the breakfast, lunch, and dinner table. Because if you don't fix these problems, you won't get great results and you want great results. So the first thing that you got to take off the table is these food emulsifiers. And there's lots of different ones. Here's just a few. One nasty one is this polysorbate 80. And it causes gut permeability and it washes away the protective lining of your gut. So these food emulsifiers, I'll show you where they are. They're, they're basically everywhere. And the key here is they're in Western food. Condiments, you know, all of the stuff that you see here, that's basically where they are because it preserves the shelf life of the food and they can mix fats and water together. So that's why they use these emulsifiers. And this is Huberman just speaking to how bad these emulsifiers are for the protective lining of your gut. Today is that when you ingest those foods, you're bringing those emulsifiers into your gut and those emulsifiers strip away the mucosal lining of the gut. Because they act like a detergent on your gut, washing away that protective lining of your gut. And they also have alterations in the microbiome composition in a negative way, some more bad gut bugs. Then they disrupt the mucosal layer, as we just spoke about. Then you've got intestinal permeability. Remember the tight junctions open up, food particles go in. Then bacteria also translocates low-grade inflammation, glucose intolerance, you've got brain fog, you don't have a lot of energy, and it can eventually lead to full-blown irritable bowel disease. Now, there's another big problem when you've got a leaky gut is that you'll have a lot of psychological stress. So that's that's all linked, interlinked, as we just saw, you know, with how the brain access, the lung access, the skin access, the testy access. So when you've got a leaky gut, it leads to anxiety and depression-like behavior neuroinflammation so your brain just doesn't work you don't have very good blood flow at all and it also activates the hpa access for more cortisol which gives you more negative emotions and it accompanies an increase in the production of lps which is nasty shit and pro-inflammatory cytokines now these emulsifiers i'm going to talk more about them towards the end and where you can find them however these the food processing in western food are just packed full of chemicals and preservatives and emulsifiers so you can start to connect the dots where you need to start looking at where these emulsifiers are. And a couple of videos or three videos that I want to play here today. And the first one is by Dr. Datasi, pretty smart individual, He's written a lot of great books. He's on YouTube. He's got a lot of great information. He's had 
thousands and thousands of patients go through his clinic. He's got a lot of data on this. And he's a PhD, DHSC, DC, MS, MMSC, FCAN. So really, he's really, really up there with all of this information. And this is what he says about one of the food intolerances intolerances that a lot, and I mean a lot of people have got. Listen to this. So inflammation in the gut activates gut immune cells. Those gut immune cells send messenger proteins to cells in the brain called neuroglia. Those neuroglia get activated and then the brain gets inflamed. And when the brain gets inflamed, nerve conduction synapses slow down. Inflammation in the brain slows down synapses and, and patients just can't think, they can't focus, they can't get their thought process going on. So those are the things that happen with it. So basically some people that, that have immune reactions to gluten, they get severe brain inflammation when they eat it. They can even have their blood brain barrier, gut barrier breakdown. They can set up the stage for neurological autoimmunity. They can decrease blood flow to their brain as their brain gets inflamed, their messenger synaptic pathways become slower and they just don't function well. And they walk in the healthcare system and they get diagnosed with chronic depressive disorder or chronic anxiety disorder or... So did you catch that? Depression and anxiety, neuroinflammation. So we, we've also got the, the gut skin access, the gut lung access, the gut testy access as well. And it's affecting all of those organ systems. So you can appreciate now how important gut health is. So we've got to take all of this nasty shit off the lunch, breakfast, and dinner tables, destroying your gut. And then this one simple solution is going to correct for that. Now, I've got a couple of other videos here from Dr. Ken Berry and also Dr. Jay. So I'll play the videos and I'll unpack exactly what that means. Listen to this. That, that was me. Yeah. Two million views or something because having man boobs is so common in the world today that there are over 2 million men who've watched my video on YouTube about it, if not three. All those things are symptoms of low testosterone. And there's a long list of prescription medications that you might be taking from your doctor, you know, your doctor that you trust, that could actually be plummeting your testosterone levels. So these big pharma drugs, they can actually plummet your testosterone. One of the ways that they do it is that most of them are petrochemicals, right? Petroleum-based and petroleum-based mimics estrogen. So when you take these drugs, they mimic estrogen, and when estrogen gets too high, it shuts down testosterone production. So if you're really sensitive to estrogen or you've got bad estrogen genetics, you can really lower testosterone. So that's one of the implications right there. And these pharmaceuticals, they've got the, a lot of them with the polysorbate 80 in them. And one of the reasons they use these emulsifiers in these drugs is that they these drugs bypass the mucosal layer barrier and enhancing absorption. So I wonder how that mechanism of action is doing it. Maybe it's disrupting, you know, these polysorbates here, as you saw up here. These are food, these food emulsifiers, but they're also in, you know, drugs as well. A lot of prescription drugs and also over-the-counter drugs they're in. So they can cause a lot of gut issues. And of course, you can see that these food processing, the way they do food process, processing, they've got a lot of food additives and chemicals in them and emulsifiers, so really destructive. So right here, I just want to talk about the oral microbiome because you want great blood pressure and you need nitric oxide production to make a lot of testosterone. And the better your blood flow, the better your brain works. You know, that's just absolutely key. And if you want to heal yourself, you need great blood flow to do that. So we've got to make sure that we're protecting our oral microbiome. The video that I'm just about to play is a conversation with a gentleman called Dr. Nathan S. Bryan. He's a PhD, and his main field of research is nitric oxide production. So listen very carefully to this. Have this effect? Absolutely. So here's what happens, and the advertisements are correct. It kills 99.99% of the bacteria when you use it. And that's the problem. That's the problem. I mean, the bacteria that live in and on the human body outnumber on human cells 10 to 1, right? So this is an entire ecology. We call this symbiosis. These bacteria are providing metabolic benefits to the human host that we can't do. One of those is production of nitric oxide. So when you eradicate these bacteria... There's an entire ecology from the mouth all the way down to the anus, right? And it's the microbiome. A lot of people focused on the gut microbiome. Years ago, we focused on the oral microbiome. And what we found was that the more diverse the microbiome, the better cardiovascular health and the better blood pressure management. Hmm. So when you eradicate this with mouthwash, we saw, I think the first paper was in maybe 2009, 2010, you take normal intensive patients, you just put them on mouthwash twice a day for seven days, you see an increase in blood pressure. Damn. Now, this, was an, this drove kind of cardiologists and, and vascular biologists crazy because 
they thought we, we thought we had a pretty good understanding of vascular biology and maintenance of systemic blood pressure. So how, by killing oral bacteria, we're affecting systemic blood pressure and vascular tone? And then we figured out, well, it's through the production of nitric oxide. So yeah, alcohol-based mouthwash does this. The chlorhexidine prescription mouthwash is very effective at killing it. The good news is, and we published this in 2019, if you use mouthwash, we certainly see an increase in blood pressure. And I think in 2020, I was on the doctor's show, we came in and we revealed that if you use mouthwash, you actually lose the protective benefits of exercise. Mm. So think about this. If you're trying to do all the right things, you're eating a good balanced diet, you're getting exercise, but if you're using mouthwash, you lose the entire cardiovascular benefits of everything you're doing. Mm. The good news is four days after we stop using it, blood pressure normalizes, the bacteria will completely repopulate. So this is a resilient community. That- so Nathan also went on to say that fluoride does the same thing. So fluoride in your toothpaste and mouthwash destroy the oral microbiome, your nitric oxide production goes down. Now, if you want great blood flow to your brain, you need nitric oxide. So you can still have brain fog. So we've got to protect the microbiome in the mouth and also the gut. And that's when we'll get back to symbiosis there. And as I mentioned before, you've got a gut testy axis and right here, gut testy axis in both healthy and disease states. And at the core of this, Access is the gut microbiome. So it's very protective of the testes and fertility and testosterone. And it's also got a blood testy barrier. So when you've got a lot of inflammation and you've got a lot of those food particles and all that shit running run right in your blood, it destroys the protective barrier between your testes and then you know it's just going to completely trash you. So you probably want to think about getting the mouthwash a miss and also the fluoride a miss. So another thing that they've been showing too, and I speak about this all the time, is omega-3, gut symbiosis. And I've got a, I've got a link below, but you can get a test called the omega index. And most of the people that we help, their test comes back about here. And when you get this test, I'll show you how to get it back into the green. So I recommend that you get that test and just see where you are and work towards getting your omega-3s back up so you'll have gut symbiosis. All right, so we've covered a bit so far. Now let's talk more about food sensitivities. Now, there's a lot of conversation going on about seed oils. Are they good? Are they bad? Well, it depends. I guess it depends. And if you've got these genes here, these seed oils, they're packed full of what's called organophosphates and they damage your gut walls, right? So just don't touch seed oils. There's a lot of other healthy oils that you can take out there. Seed oils, in my opinion, they're just not worth the risk at all. That's just what I think. And then if you've got a sensitivity to nightshades and insecticides, now nightshades are interesting because they also are affected by organophosphates and carbamates here. So organophosphates and carbamates. Here's where it gets interesting. You've got insecticides, synthetic but also natural insecticides now because i've got this gene i'm very sensitive to plant insecticides so you've got to be very careful with these genes now the synthetic ones the organophosphates are everywhere and the really interesting and good news is when you fix this and i'll show you how to fix this you've got a good population of this lactobacillus here they reduce organophosphate pesticide absorption and toxicity. So you can see how important the gut biome is when you get a load of these chemicals. Now, for me, I don't take any risk. Very rarely do I eat non-organic foods because my health and my performance are just too important to me. And I've got these gene sensitivities. I've got this one here and I've got this one here. So I've got to be super careful and that could be you. But what you also want to do is make sure that, that the strategies that I give you at the end, you put them all together and it's just like stacking the odds in your favor to get your gut health back. So seed oils and nightshades and natural insecticides could be an issue for you. And of course, organophosphates and carbamates there. Now, what we're also seeing, we've we've done a lot of genetic testing with a lot of people over the years, over 180 now. And of course, like the nightshades here, but then you've also got lectins. Now, lectins are a pretty big one. With about the 180 people that we've done, we're seeing about a 65, 65% of them are sensitive to lectins. Now, why are lectins a problem? Well, listen to Dr. J. This is what he says about lectins when you've got this gene sensitivity. The lectin is a big one. That's a four-fold higher risk of heart disease, even as a plus minus, the S-E-L-E. Yeah, that's um, huge. Yeah. Yeah, so lectins are going to trigger a lot of damage to the arteries and damage to the gut. I would recommend avoiding grains, yeah. you know? 
Grains are the, yeah. the major source of lactins. Yeah. And his gut's very sensitive to grains also, the gluten. And, he, and he's got a thyroid gene that comes up later with gluten as well. So I would say just take off the grains, you know. So pretty significant there. And just incidentally, the nightshades, if you've got a sensitivity to it like me, and the, the people that we've tested, maybe 30% have a sensitivity to it. So it's, it's not such a big deal for a lot of people. But you can also, because nightshades, ashwagandha is a nightshade. So you've heard about how great ashwagandha is. If I take it, it crashes me. So even supplements can take you out too. So you got it's, it's very nuanced, as you can see, but I'll give you a bit of a solution towards the end there. Now, right here, gluten. So I'm going to really unpack gluten very, very in depth. So you can even be tested for celiac and it's negative, but you still got gluten sensitivity. And we're seeing about 85% of the people we help have gluten sensitivity. And it's going to completely trash your gut, absolutely destroy your gut. So the main mechanism of action that how this happens, and this is like a genetic report, you can see avoid gluten, avoid gluten. So your gut is very sensitive to gluten there. Even if you've been tested for celiac, you can still have gluten sensitivity. And that's what we're seeing. So basically, you've got many different forms. So wheat, gluten, it's just a protein. If this is the gluten protein here. It branches off to gliden, gluten, and glutamorphin there. So when they test you for celiac, they only test gliden alpha, right? And trans glutamase 2 in the gut. That's it. But you could be sensitive to glutamorphin. You could be sensitive to trans glutamase in the skin or trans glutamase 6 in the brain. Now, what I learned from Dr. Dadis in this book here is that when you are sensitive to trans glutamase 6, look what does look what does to your brain. Gluten can trigger immune reactivity to trans glutamase 6, leading to autoimmune destruction of your brain and nervous tissue. And a lot of people have this problem. They just get brain fog. They don't feel very good. So you can also have sensitivities to the gliden aspect, beta, gamma, and omega. So even if you've been tested with celiac, you still could have gluten sensitivity and it will destroy, and I mean destroy, your gut. So... Lectins are another big issue, as I mentioned there. Approximately 30% of our food contains lectins, some of which may be resistant enough to digestion and enter circulation. Because of their binding properties, lectin can cause nutrient deficiencies, disrupt digestion, and cause severe intestinal damage. Right? And if you're sensitive to it, you can see that it's a big problem. Right here. This is the solution, legends. So basically, it's just probiotics, right? It's just getting enough probiotics and I'll show you what to do and where to go and how to how to do this but this is the meta-analysis that they did remember 26 meta-analysis placebo controlled 1891 people and they found that once you got enough probiotics over a certain amount of time and I'll explain what that is then all your inflammation goes down, the endotoxins, they all go down and you get homeostatic balance again. So you have a healthy gut. Now, here is what you can do. And I learned this information that I'm presenting to you right here about this study that I've just mentioned there from this person here, Dr. Michael. And I've got his video link below if you want to check it out. But that meta-analysis, it was just 10 billion per day over two to three months. However, and critically, some of the trials went and lasted for six months. So if you've got a really sick gut, it's just going to take you a lot longer. And this is the, this is all you've got to do. So you just want to go and find a lactobif one. So you've got lactobacillus here and the, the bifa, bifiditis there. And that's all you need to do. And that's what's going to give you a healthy gut. And critically, you've also got to make sure you've got prebiotics because these prebiotics make short chain fatty acids and they also help modulate bacterial growth for the healthy one they decrease inflammation they decrease fatty acid in the liver so your fatty fatty liver gut hormones for satiety so you feel full you don't overeat they decrease cholesterol synthesis decrease colon cancer and butyrate here increases gut bacteria the good stuff because they're feeding the good gut bacteria so they grow and grow and grow and increase apoptosis of colon cancer cells, increase intestinal gluconeogenesis, which is really good, and increase anti-inflammatory properties. So these short chain fatty acids, the way that I do this is pretty simple. If you cook your rice or your potatoes, and I always skin mine because the skin can be very harsh on the gut, and you boil them for about probably 40 to 60 minutes, and then you cool them overnight, 
what the scientists are now very clear on, they produce resistant starch. And that resistant starch turns into short-chain fatty acids and does all of those benefits that I mentioned to you before. And the same is true for rice. So you cook your rice, you let it cool, and then you eat it the next day. Now, with rice, I'll give you a caveat. Don't leave the rice in the fridge any longer than 24 hours. Why? Because it can start to build up mold very quickly, and that's going to cause a lot of inflammation in your body. You don't want mold. So no longer than 24 hours in the fridge for rice. So basically putting it all together, Ledgers, if you've got any questions, drop a comment below. What we need to do is get rid of our food sensitivities. And I've just shown you a few that we could, like gluten could be, lectins could be, nightshades and seed oils, that could be a problem. Then also you want to make sure that you get enough omega-3. I've got that link below. Make sure that you take off, take out your mouth hygiene, the, the mouthwash and the fluoride there so your oral microbiome can recover. And remember, that's just four days and You've also got to be very careful about these, the Western food, because it's just packed full of these emulsifiers and they're very destructive for the gut. So the way that I think about it, we use something that I call the hunter method. So very simply, you hunt for your protein at your trusted butcher, right? You ask him questions, is this grass fed and pasture-raised? Because the problem becomes if you, if you don't get grass fed finished, they can feed them things like moldy corn. They can feed them things like grains and you get a little dose of lectins and also gluten in it. So you can get cross-contamination and you can be very sensitive to gluten. A little bit can cause that inflammation. The next thing you want to do is forage for your greens and your fruit at your trusted local farmer or where you get your produce from. Ask them questions. Is this organic? Because remember, if you're sensitive to organophosphates, that's just pesticides and that's going to cause your gut to be destroyed. And what I love to do is just re reject big food because that's what's making us sick. As you can now see, the emulsifiers, the chemicals and the preservatives reject big food and support your local dudes, right? They need us. They need our help. Big food and big pharma are... They're working together to keep us sick, as you can now appreciate. And you, finally, just one thing that I'd like to touch on, you could have parasites. And this is not wonderful to think about, but this is the stools that you want, right? Does your stools look like that, which is your number twos, or do they look more like this? Well, you could have gut dysbiosis or you could have parasites. And it's estimated now that depending on where you live, 30 to 70 Center of people have parasites, and I've got this link below. That's what I use twice a year. It's you have two weeks on, one week off, two weeks on. You do that once, then you do that again, and then you just make sure you get rid of parasites. Now, the reason I do it twice, you probably only need to do it once, is I've got animals. And if you've got cats and dogs like I have, they're notorious for parasites, and you can actually get parasites through them. So if this has been helpful, drop a comment below. I'd really appreciate that. It helps the algorithm and helps me to, to reach more people to give them this information because, you know, what you ultimately want is to be this, this man or this woman here that's just charged up, ready to, to, to attack today. And we, we certainly don't want gut dysbiosis because you've got poor testicular function. Then you've got skin issues, you've got heart issues, you've got brain issues, you've got lung issues, and you've got metabolism issues. And it's all related to the gut. So I hope this has been helpful. Any questions, drop in the comments below and see you on the next one.